Right now, they won't confirm to us if this is or is not being investigated as an act of terror. This is where it all started at this Admiral gas station. The mother pulled up, parked her car, and went inside to get something. Police say that's when the man jumped in and took off. But in the back seat were her two children. Take a look behind me here. This is the side of the building where the firefighters had to literally cut away at the wall, the ceiling, the floor. The major goal of the Genesee County Land Bank is to clean up neighborhoods in Flint. Well, right now, this government agency is working on cleaning up its own reputation. From Standing Rock to the streets of Flint, this weekend, water activists from all over are showing they stand together. Yeah, Dave, we're in downtown Fenton at the Fenton Community Center right now. You can see all this behind me. To give you an idea of the damage, this is the roof. Here's a piece of the roof tiles right here. This has been blowing around all day. The attorneys got in a pretty heated argument over whether or not the alleged victim needs to be protected in this case. Nearly every piece of technology that we use today, it talks to us through the internet. To give you an idea, here you can pack it into a pretty good snowball, but this is what has road crews worry because it's this moisture that could create ice later tonight. Mold may be living in your home and you may not even know it, and some mold can actually make you sick. The sign read, make the township white again. One man was so upset, he took a saw to it. This isn't the scene Isaac expected to find in his first week in America. But in its own way, he says this demonstration is making him feel welcome. It's also very important for these researchers. You can see there's a fence up around this building. That's because the bricks are literally crumbling. Beecher beats Grand Rapids Covenant Christian to win the state championship. Congrats to the Buccaneers. Then NBC 25's Corey Kompik joins us now. And Corey, this team has quite a reputation when it comes to winning. They do. When you're it's not that bad out here, but like you said, it's cold. Traffic's moving pretty well right now on I-75. To our home security cameras, if they're connected to the internet, anyone could be watching you. As a kid climbing these trees, there is a danger there, and Mike Whiting wanted to share that sense of fear. State police are still out on the water. It was about 20 minutes ago or so when the diver came up from the last dive that they did. Ice is messing with your sports. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Is it? Delaying games. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, true. That's why we're on late tonight. What's down exactly what happened? Yeah, Dave, we just got a lot of new details in just the last few minutes here at Flint International Bishop Airport. The biggest thing here, what we've been waiting for all day, the FBI has confirmed this as being investigated as an act of terrorism. We now know a little bit more about who carried out this attack as well. We are told his name is Amor Tui, and he is around 50 years of age and from Canada. He came to the airport this morning, but he was not traveling through the airport. He did not have a ticket. He was not boarding a plane or deplaning here. He was in the airport's public area, so before security. And we're told that he went to a restaurant. He had something to eat. At some point, he went into a restroom, a public restroom that is before the security checkpoint. And he then went through his bags, possibly. He, he came out. He had two bags with him. But what he came out with was something that wasn't seen before he went in. He had a knife. It was about 12 inches long with an 8-inch serrated blade. And when he came came out. That's when he selected the officer. It was Officer Jeff Neville. He is a lieutenant at the airport with the police department, previously worked with the Genesee County Sheriff's Office. He attacked him, stabbing him in the neck. And when he did that, when he started attacking the officer, that's when he yelled out several things. He uh, spent a little time in the restroom, uh, dropped both bags and came out, uh, pulled out a knife, uh, yelled Allah Akbar and stabbed Lieutenant Novell in the neck. It's an ongoing investigation. There's joint operations going on in Canada as we speak. We want to thank our Canadian uh, partners who are helping us further investigate uh, this uh, attack. We're told by the FBI that he had a hatred for the United States, but they didn't give us many more specifics beyond that. We are told that he is a lone wolf, that he doesn't have anyone else that he's working with. When we asked if it appeared that he'd received any terrorism-related training from any organization, we were told that they don't believe so at this time, but they said they're continuing to investigate it. They want anyone who knows anything about this individual to also call them, let them know. The FBI says they're continuing to investigate because this man was not on their radar at all. Again. His name is Amor Fatui. Uh, His name is actually pronounced Amor Tui. He's around 50 years of age from Canada. They say this man was not previously on their radar. For now, live at Flint Bishop Airport, Stephanie Parkinson, NBC 25 News. Well, thank you, Stephanie, very much. You'll continue to work your sources. Sadie, that's a detail we don't know and will likely never get the answer to. Investigators have been unable to locate Kamora's body. They say she was buried in a shallow grave. 
but they believe her remains were likely carted off by animals. In essence, we believe the child was beaten to death. This is three-year-old Kimora Simon. Her own parents are charged with murdering her, then burying her body in a shallow grave in this wooded area. This is behind the Evergreen Regency townhome complex on Flint's south side. For three days, the top law enforcement officials in the state have been looking uh, and digging and excavating. We've not found the child's remains. But that hasn't stopped the Genesee County prosecutor from charging 27-year-old Erica Finley and 26-year-old Kahari Simon in the toddler's death. So you are charged there with felony murder. Do you understand that? Yeah. A potential case of child abuse with Kimora's five-year-old brother is what brought this all to light just a few weeks ago. When the state went to investigate the claim, they couldn't find Kimora. The parents' stories then didn't add up. Investigators soon realized Kimora has likely been dead for a year. Despite not finding her body, the prosecutor feels very confident in this investigation. So the officers had to really come up with information that took a lot of legwork and time and, and effort to, to uh, be able to prove to me, to start with, that the child in fact was deceased. They've done an outstanding job here. That is what's allowed us to move forward and try to seek justice for Kimora. Kimora's five-year-old brother I mentioned along with Erica's other son have both been placed in foster care. Simon and Finley are due back in this courthouse next Tuesday. We will of course be staying on top of this so stay with NBC 25 for the very latest. For now live in Flint, Stephanie Parkinson, NBC 25 News. Well to give you an idea of where we are, this is South Saginaw Road right here. We're between Bristol and Maple in Burton. This is where it all started at this Admiral gas station. The mother pulled up, parked her car and went inside to get something. Police say that's when the man jumped in and took off. But in the back seat were her two children, her nearly three-year-old daughter Ariana and her nine-month-old son Lincoln. I ran in to get cigarettes of all things. Moments later, her car and her kids gone. My window was cracked, so I did say, you know, my kids are in the car, and it just it made them speed off faster. It was a long three hours for Ariana and her baby brother, but the two were found safe still inside this dark blue Monte Carlo on Flint's north side. Thank God. The children's Thank grandmother God. crying and overwhelmed with joy when she heard the good news. I'm going to be able to hold them again and kiss them again. For the Burton police chief, it's one of the happiest possible endings to one of the worst calls for help. Little girl had the biggest smile on her face. Pretty brave little three-year-old. Thank God they found them and that they're, they're okay. Again, as you just heard from the police chief, they do have the suspect they believe responsible for this in custody now. Reporting live in Burton, Stephanie Parkinson, NBC 25 News. The flooding has gone down significantly since what we've been seeing over the weekend. But as you can see here, still a lot of water covering the roadway. Like you said, this is Curry Parkway in Midland. You can really smell the strong odor coming from this water. And unfortunately, that family, just a few doors down here, down the street, their basement is still full of this smelly brown water. You can see where the water is currently. It's a nightmare that still isn't over for new homeowners Rachel and Darren Studebaker. From easily replaceable things like beds and clothes to the priceless treasures like their son's baby books, it's all still sitting under four feet of water. All of their information is just gone. So it's, it's just tragic that I, I don't have that anymore and I can't get it back. You do that. You know, my five-year-old, God, I don't remember. I don't remember when he got his first tooth. If I looked in a book, I'd know, but I'll never know again. So I won't be able to share those memories with them when they grow up, and that hurts the most. Rachel and Darren tell me when it happened, it was quick. Overnight, in about six hours, it went from dry to two and a half feet of water. It just kept pouring in. Then it started to pour in through the side of our house. A terrifying scene for their five-year-old son, Ethan. He had seen the water coming in the door, and he thought that our house was going to fill up with water and that he was going to drown. With their spirits high. I mean, it's gone down, I mean, significantly yeah. since yesterday. The focus for Darren and Rachel is now on putting the pieces back together. We're just hoping that we can get the insurance coverage because we just got this house two weeks ago. With several feet of water still in the basement, the Studebaker family can't live in their house right now. And you can see here there's not much trash at the curb right now. That's because they can't get in their basement to pull anything out right now. They're just going to have to wait for those floodwaters to go down. Live in Midland, Stephanie Parkinson, NBC 25. 
The Titipawasi River looking a little bit more like a lake right now. We've been seeing devastating flooding for the last 48 hours and it's not over yet. According to the Office of Emergency Management in Midland County, the Titipawasi River is expected to crest over 32 feet in about two hours from now. That road's pretty much impassable right there. You wouldn't want to try driving through those waters. Kyla Peoples is just south of this spot on North River Road in Saginaw County. You're where homes are literally going underwater right now. Kyla, what are you seeing along the Titipawasi River there? Take a look at this. These are all of the roads closed right now in Midland County. More than 100 roads in Midland County are impassable. Emergency responders are asking people not to drive around the barricades. We've seen it. We continue to see it. These literally are crumbling from the floodwaters, these roads. Still, it's not stopping people. They're driving through the flooded roads. One spot kind of lucking out, not seeing any flooding problems. It's Genesee County. This is a live look from our Skynet camera in downtown Flint, high atop the Durant. We are going to check in now with Nick Russo. Nick, how are we looking for tonight across Mid Michigan for people? Steph, many people did see some rain showers. Thank you, Nick, and we will be continuing to follow with the flooding for you all night tonight. In other news, hundreds are coming together in Flint this afternoon, and this is all for Flint's annual Pride Fest. It's happening right now in downtown Flint at the U of M Pavilion and Riverfront Park. Attention all boat lovers, the 30th annual Bay City Grand Prix. This is formerly known as Bay City River War. It's happening right now in Bay City. There are boat and jet ski races, a boat and sportsman show. In Flint today, people are joining together for an international day of dancing, the day of global water. Water Dances aims to take on water issues through dance activism. Car lovers of all ages are gathering at Sloan Museum in Flint. The annual auto fair is going on right now as well. The 45th annual show features music, food, activities, and lots of stuff for the kids to do there, and of course, lots and lots and lots of cars. If you feel like you need a break from your smartphones, you're probably not alone, and there's a new device that could solve all of your problems. The idea is that it's designed to be used as little as possible. Coming up on NBC 25 News at 6, we'll show you the light phone and how it works to keep things simple for you. Plus, if you're in the market for some new wheels, there are some ways to cut down on the cost. How the style of vehicle that you pick, it could put money back in your wallet. That's all straight ahead on NBC 25 News at 6. If you're shopping for a new deal on a set of wheels, well, you may want to consider a used sedan. As more and more Americans are buying up SUVs, the prices of used cars are getting cheaper. The light phone is described as a minimalist cell phone. It's designed to help you unplug by only offering you the bare essentials. Circa Tech correspondent Dan Bean takes a closer look at this anti-technology to see if it's really worth the money. I don't know, it's tempting. Coming up tomorrow, another episode of Community Wide airs on our sister station, the CW46. This week, we're talking in summer and getting you ready for the, all the season has to offer for you. You can grill all summer long, but summer is peak season. We can't catch a break, can we? Not at all. Lots of rain in the future, and that's not what we need right now. Yeah, well, it's warm at least, and it's kind of baseball weather, but you're talking hockey I'm tonight. I'm talking hockey today. I think it's safe to say Mother Nature has not been the nicest to mid-Michigan this week. Not at all. Now we have another severe thunderstorm warning. Will that move out pretty quickly in Escota? Yeah, the storm's moving right into Lake Huron. It'll be gone in 15 minutes. All right, thank you, Nick. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tonight at 11. But also facing Congress and the White House, Trump's allegations of wiretapping during the election and confirmation hearings for a new Supreme Court justice. Our national correspondent, Michelle Macaluso, shows us how it could all go down. That's first on Fox. But the Senate might use the nuclear option, which would only require a simple majority to confirm the nominee. In just a few minutes, why the battle over repealing and replacing the Affordable Care Act hit home for many people right here in Michigan. We speak to some small business owners for their take on the fight on Capitol Hill. We're now learning an elderly man is dead tonight after a crash in Midland. Midland police say the two-car crash happened at the corner of Isabella and Vance Thursday morning. 82-year-old Robert Johnson was found unconscious when officers got to him. He was taken right to the hospital, but he died there on Friday night. Investigators are still trying to figure out, though, what caused that crash to happen. We were lucky, though, to get plenty of sunshine today. Made it feel a bit warmer, a bit closer to spring for me, at least after the snow that we had seen. Let's check in now for a first look at our forecast with Fox 66 meteorologist Nick Russo. Hey, Nick. Hey, Stephanie. It was in basketball, it's been a great day if you love the maize and blue. Yeah, that is definitely true. Michigan knocked <laughs> off number two Louisville to advance to the Sweet 16. Fox 66's Tom Meshin joins us from Indianapolis with more.
Good evening from downtown Indianapolis. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I have to say, Tom always gets the fun jobs, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, in Indianapolis, <laughs> yeah, watching this go down. Yeah, lucky guy for sure. I have to say, though, my bracket not doing so hot anymore. Mm. But, you know, it happens to the best of us, right? You were number one at one point in <laughs> at our one in-house uh, newsroom poll there. Yeah, well, while fans in Indy helped push the Wolverines to a win today, Michigan State fans had some different reactions to the Spartans game versus Kansas. Fox 66's Kyla Peoples headed to Burton to show us. Well, you know, Joel, Steph, it's... Yeah, but what do people in Michigan think about all of this? Next on Fox 66 News at 10, we head to Battle Creek to find out why some say Obamacare has them paying more and they're hoping for change. This leads us to our Facebook question of the day tonight. We want to know, do you think President Trump's proposed health care bill will help or hurt Americans if it passes? Yeah. At 58 degrees, I will take that any day. Mm -hmm. Well, I think most eyes have been on basketball today, but not everybody. Yeah, not everyone. There were plenty of people that put down their remotes and headed out to the movies this weekend, and they were greeted in French. Bonjour. Bonjour. But this beast might not be giving it up too quickly. <laughs> David Daniel counts down this weekend's top five. But today in Bay City, it was still <laughs> full steam ahead. There was no shortage of green. If you stopped by the city today there, we take you to the popular annual parade. Yeah, Fox 66's Miranda Parnell takes us on a run through Bay City, showing us why the races mean so much to the area. Midland favorite is up for a prestigious award tomorrow. The H Hotel is being honored by AAA with a four diamond award. The travel agency awards the best of the best hotels and restaurants in the state each year with this honor. The ceremony is tomorrow afternoon. Futuristic ideas are on display this weekend at Kettering University in Flint. It's the 60th annual Flint Regional Science Fair wrapping up this afternoon with an award ceremony. More than 300 students from Genesee, Bay, Saginaw, Midland, Lapeer, St. Clair, Tuscola, and Shiawassee counties in there with their projects to share and show off. I think it's the up and downs though that get us. All of a sudden we're spoiled with those warm days in February, yeah. then we get more snow. So I think that's what makes the winter worse than it really was. Exactly. It was a bit of a shock to the system. That <clears throat> and all that money and there's no easy way to figure out how much a particular medicine might cost you at a pharmacy. Well, everyone was just on the couch today. I think for the last couple days here. <laughs> Screaming just and basketball. yelling at the TV set. I mean, it's just, it's March. It's that time. It was a tale of two teams today as much.